For this lesson, I'll be using assembly C02 underscore 01. Looking at my assembly, it looks like a pretty typical assembly, but there's something that's very common inside of mechanical assemblies that's missing. When most people create mechanical assemblies, they spend an enormous amount of time putting holes in various parts that are all perfectly aligned so that later they can add screws to them. Thanks to the Design Accelerator tools inside of Autodesk Inventor, I don't have to go through that entire process. I can go through a much more streamlined process. First, I'll go to the Design tab. Then, I'll go all the way to the end, under the Fasten panel, and select Bolted Connection. The Bolted Connection Generator works very much like placing holes inside of Autodesk Inventor. I can choose placement of linear, concentric, on point or by hole styles. I can also choose whether the hole type will be through all or to a blind connection. The reason that I have this additional option is we have the ability to place holes and fasteners through multiple parts at once. For this assembly I'll start out using the concentric placement. I'll select my start plane, then as with all Autodesk Inventor dialogs, I will look for the red arrow and select a circular reference. Then I'll need a termination. For a through hole type, this would be the last face on the opposite side of the last part. I want a blind type. So I'll select the top face of the last part that I'll be placing a hole in. When I do this, I get a preview of the holes and I see that there are holes in three parts, both in the display and in the dialog. I'll select the rough diameter for my bolt. I'm planning on using a number 10, so when I select this, I'll see that Inventor automatically knows that a normal fit clearance hole through the first two parts will be at .201 inches, and then I'll see that it's ready to place a quarter 20 thread for the last hole. To select a fastener, I'll go near the top of this column and select Click to Add Fastener. This will open up the library. In this library, I can choose what standard I want to draw from. I can even filter based on the type of bolt that I want to use. Regardless of what I select, I'll only be presented with the type of fasteners that I can get in this rough length and in this thread. I'll find the cross recessed truss head machine screw and select it. Immediately I get a preview. I can drag the length of the tapped hole and I can drag the length of the fastener. An important thing to note is the standards based nature of design accelerators. This bolt can only be snapped from purchasable length to purchasable length. I'm not going to get a custom bolt length from a design accelerator. This is much better for the design process, and it keeps me from ordering custom, expensive fasteners that I don't need. Now that I've chosen the type of fastener that I want, I can return back to the circular reference. I'll reselect circular references, and then click additional locations where I want to place bolts. Also in the dialog box are areas for calculation, both for load and fatigue calculation, We'll take a closer look at calculation in another lesson. For now, I'll simply press OK, tell it to go ahead and use the default file name, though I could either bypass being prompted for a file name or enter a custom file name. It will generate not only the bolts, but if I select the cover and look more closely, I can see that it's placed the clearance holes in the cover. I can also double click on the reservoir and see the tapped holes in the reservoir. Looking at my assembly, I have a standard sheet metal bracket that I use in multiple assemblies that I want to connect to the reservoir as well. I'll restart the bolted connection tool and this time change placement to by hole. I'll select my start plane on the top of the bracket and select the hole that's in the bracket. I want to switch the type to through, and I'll select the termination to be the back side of the cast tab 
on the reservoir. Based on the size of the selected hole, it's telling me that it's sized for a number 12 fastener. I'll click to add the fastener. And once again, the available fasteners will be filtered based on the size of hole that I need. I'll find a cross recessed pan head, select it, and it will appear in the assembly. I can drag out the standard length of the fastener, or I can make changes to the dialog and have it help me select one. One option that we have is to change the clearance hole to a threaded hole. So even though it's a through hole, it could still be threaded. However, I want to add a fastener to the end of the bolt stack. When I select it, it will initially offer me a washer. If I don't want a washer, I can change it to a nut. However, here I'll select a regular helical spring lock washer and then add another fastener and Autodesk Inventor will assume that I want a nut. I'll select the hex machine screw nut and I get a preview on the screen. I'll just shorten my fastener up just so it goes just beyond the nut. And since I use this type of fastener frequently, I have some additional options. With the dialog expanded, I can click Add and add this bolted connection to the template's library. Now, whenever I create a design inside of Autodesk Inventor, if I want a cross recessed pan head machine screw, going through a lock washer and into a hex machine nut, all I have to do is select this and then choose the size. For now, I'll simply press OK. It will generate the fasteners. And once again, it will add a hole wherever it's needed. If you use Autodesk Inventor or another 3D CAD system, and you think back at all the time you've spent making sure that holes were properly aligned through multiple parts so that you could assemble them together, I think you will immediately recognize the value of the bolted connection generator. But of course, this is just the beginning. The real value comes when you go to make changes.